Throughout the history of Mohammedan Islam, they either converted the holy places of the conquered peoples or destroyed them. They also deliberately desecrated cemeteries and shrines of others. Why, if Mohammedan Islam is peaceful and understanding, did they do so? Our series has made it crystal clear that Mohammedan Islam is not what its followers falsely claim it to be. We have demonstrated in chapter after chapter, using only their own books and scripture as references, that Mohammedan Islam is first and foremost not a religion but a cult belief system. The cult of Muhammad, since all his followers have to emulate his sunnah, that is, his actions, thoughts, instructions and deeds. Mohammedan Islam, as we have amply proven in our series, is a bigoted, racist, hate-mongering, war-mongering, unjust, immoral and hence ungodly belief system. Mohammedans are regularly able to deceive ignorant and unread people by telling them that the Quran forbids aggression, that the Muslims are only defending themselves. Really? Can they show us how, where and when the Hindus attack them? Or the Spaniards? Italians, French, Armenians, Egyptians, North Africans, Chinese, Buddhists, etc., etc., did the same. As his clones, his followers must ape and emulate Muhammad's claims that the Quraysh, the Christians, or the Judaized Arabs were also aggressing or intending to attack him. Ladies and gentlemen, please be aware of the following very simple facts that invariably escape the attention of most people but are actually pregnant with meaning and logic. Muhammad and his followers, the Arabs of the Hijaz especially, were among the most illiterate, superstitious, unlearned and uncivilized people in the area of what we call now the Middle East, even though they were surrounded by three of the most important civilizations in human history, the Sassanid Persian, the Byzantine Christian and the Coptic Egyptian. Hence, the hordes of Arabian Mohammedans who conquered these civilizations needed to have mosques to pray in. Since they could not build a proper house, let alone an imposing mosque, they very conveniently took over the holy places of the conquered peoples and transformed them into mosques. They did so with the magnificent cathedrals of the Christians, the synagogues of the Jews, and the temples of the Zoroastrian Persians. They deliberately and systematically destroyed and desecrated an enormous number of outstanding Hindu and Buddhist temples and built their mosque on their sacred land instead. The reason why, after looting the enormous wealth of the Hindu and Buddhist temples, they demolished them should be simple to understand. These temples harbored human and animal figures and sexual displays, all of which are prohibited by Muhammad's joyless, heartless and artless sunnah. It was Muhammad, after all, and as usual, who was the first to start the process of initiating the desecration of graves and graveyards of so-called unbelieving or disbelieving kuffar. Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith 3.92, narrated by Anas bin Malik. The Prophet came to Medina and ordered a mosque to be built and said, O Bani Najjar, suggest to me the price of your land. They said, We do not want its price except from Allah. That is, they wished for a reward from Allah for giving up their land freely. So the Prophet ordered the graves of the pagans to be dug out and the land to be leveled and the date palm trees to be cut down. The cut date palms were fixed in the direction of the Qibla of the mosque. So-called believers and unbelievers, I would like to point out to you that in reality, the graves of these pagans actually belong to the deceased fathers and forefathers of the now Islamized Bani Najjar. Nothing whatsoever sacred that does not belong to the Mohammedans cannot and will not be violated and or desecrated by tolerant and peace-loving Mohammedan Muslims even if it were their own heritage. Muhammad and his Arabian hordes did so 1400 years ago and we watch with amazement, horror and disgust the gleeful repeat performances by his hate-mongering current followers all over the world and yet with an obscene degree of hypocrisy, they complain if someone desecrates the leaves of a Quran. The Dome of the Rock was built by the Arabian Umayyad Caliph Abdul Malik from 688 to 691 AD. It was not intended to be a mosque, but a shrine for pilgrims. 
It was built upon the holy shrine, land of the Jews, the Temple Mount of Jerusalem, where the original temple of Solomon used to be. Another of the earliest examples of this kind of sequestration and occupation was in Damascus, Syria, where in 705, once again, the Umayyad Caliph Abdul Malik took this time the church of St. John from the Christians and had it rebuilt as a mosque. The Umayyad Mosque, also known as the Grand Mosque of Damascus, is one of the largest mosques in the world and one of the oldest sites of continuous prayer since the rise of Islam. A shrine in the mosque is said to contain the head of John the Baptist. Overall, Abdul Malik is said to have transformed 10 important churches in Damascus into mosques. In Syria also, the Church of Job was converted to a Sheikh Sa'ad mosque. The process of turning churches into mosques was especially intensive in the villages of all the conquered lands of Christendom with the gradual conversion of the native Christians under the oppressive and onerous jizya tax and dhimmi laws to Muhammadan Islam. During his persecution of the indigenous Christian Copts of Egypt, the Arabian Abbasid Caliph al Ma'mun turned many churches into mosques, both in Cairo and in the Egyptian villages, which had no mosques in the earlier generations of Muhammadan Islam. Following the same tradition, the Fatimid Caliph al-Hakim converted numerous churches and synagogues into mosques. In Spain, many earlier Visigothic churches that had been built on the location of Roman temples were converted into mosques. The chief mosque in Palermo was previously a church. After the Crusades, several churches were again turned into mosques in the Holy Land. The Ottoman Turks converted into mosques nearly all churches, monasteries and chapels in Constantinople, including the famous St. Sophia Cathedral immediately after the capturing of the city in 1453. To make the buildings fit as mosques, the Turks destroyed the icons, plundering their precious plating in the process, and defaced the frescoes. The Ottoman Sultan, Muhammad II, was the first to perform a Muslim prayer in what had previously been the St. Sophia Cathedral. Hagia Sophia was built between 324 to 337 AD. After serving two different religions, 916 years as a church and 477 years as a mosque in Istanbul, Turkey, it was converted into a museum on Kamal Atatürk's orders. He believed that it should be considered a world heritage and done with its service as a worshipping temple so that people could come and see it. In many instances, mosques were established on the holy places of Jewish or Christian sanctuaries associated with biblical personalities who are also recognized by Muhammad's Quran. This practice was particularly common in the Holy Land. The Khalif Omar laid the foundation of Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount, the most sacred site in Judaism. The cave of the patriarchs in Hebron, the second most holy site in Judaism, was converted into a church during the Crusades before being turned into a mosque in 1266 and henceforth banned to Jews and Christians. In 711 AD, Cordoba, as many other Andalusian cities, was conquered by the Moors and the Visigothic church was converted to a mosque. The large Cordoba mosque was modeled after the one in Damascus and is a real masterpiece. The surrounding neighborhood formed the heart of the city. In Istanbul, Turkey, the most astounding Byzantine church, the Hagia Sophia, constructed by the Emperor Justinian in Constantinople, was turned into the Hagia Sophia Mosque from 1453 to 1935. The Cathedral of St. John became the Hirami Ahmed Pasha Mosque in late 16th century. After the Islamic conquest of Persia, Zoroastrian fire temples with their four axial arch openings were usually turned into mosques simply by setting a mihrab, a prayer niche, on the place of the arch nearest to the Qibla, the direction of Mecca. This practice is described by numerous Muhammadan sources. Zoroastrian temples converted into mosques in such a manner could be found in Bukhara as well as in other Iranian cities.